This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get awesome, get geeky. It is the Awesome Cast episode 455 of the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, with a train rolling by, ready to talk technology with you. And we got a studio full, and the sun is setting over Beachview as we can finally not get our suntan while we're podcasting here through the window. One day I'll buy curtains, I swear. But with us here in studio, first of all, I'll go. I'll just go down the horn here. Dutters is with us. Hey, hey, Hi, she's. Uh, <laughs> she's. I don't even know what you do anymore. <laughs> I don't even ask you what I'm doing. I, I, now. It's, 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 I think we need to update your resume on this show, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes, let's do that. She is. A, she is a social media guru and uh, brander marketer for I don't know how many entities at this point, All of including. Them. The scare house. Yes, correct. We'll, we'll, just, that one. we'll just say including the scare house. <laughs> yeah, that's me. She Spooky. has the she has the most. Don't int- check my search history, please. Don't check your search history <laughs> between this show and scare house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also with us, uh, he's a gadget guru down at Big Bank International Esquire in uh, downtown Pittsburgh. Is that too close? Should I say that yet? <laughs> John yeah, Chilla is with us. We talk about your commuting. We talk. Yeah, we talk about everything. Commuting. And I, I go down there. And finally, I mean, I go down there to work. I could be in a co-op space. You could be. I There's, could be. Have you been in Industrious at PPG Place? It is. I have not fascinating up there. We were up there for the Pittsburgh uh, party in the fall. There was a new. There's a new co-op space right on Fifth Avenue. That is so weird. I like to me co-op spaces, and I, I guess can probably agree with this. Co-op spaces are like that. That that building, likely a warehouse in a neighborhood that doesn't have a lot of businesses, right? Like you, 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 you know. I, I think we are. Place. I think you are unfairly biased by the ones that you know. That's right, because the one. <laughs> but that's all there was for the longest think, time, right? That's true. When it started up, but now it's like this thing on like the 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 fifteenth floor of PPG plays with these yeah. glass rooms, literally glass rooms, or your offices in these things, and uh, but but yeah, but they're popping up. They're they're kind of more upscale now. I want to say there used to be a shoe store in the one, like the one on Fifth Avenue. Remember Liberty Travel was on the corner? Okay. Like that kind of area next to the Fairmont. Mm-hmm. So it's like right tucked in there. I, I think it used to be a shoe store. Mm. So there, But then they took that floor that was the shoe store and multiple floors above it. Well, of course, there's the beauty shop yep. and there's, you know, Work Hard Pittsburgh, of mm-hmm. course, and uh, and everything. So, uh, but with us, as we mentioned, you heard him for a second there. John Lang is with us of Looking for Group Representing, as well as, Academy, as, well as Academy Pittsburgh who just had a graduating session. That's true. We just graduated another 14 people through our developer boot camp. It's great. Means I almost have time off, except not really, because replay's coming up. Oh, <laughs> at least that's <laughs> hey, that's nicely spaced. Yes. So at least we're not dealing with week grad- and a half, a whole week and a half. That's I mean that's that's better than nothing, right? Yes. So yes. <laughs> I would like to say that on our um, doc, you are anonymous wombat. Anonymous wombat, perfect. <laughs> mm. We haven't had an anonymous uh, 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 character for a while. Excellent. Well, this is the awesome cast. We'll be talking more about what you're up to and what we'll all be up to that weekend, I guess, uh, in some manner. But, uh, of course, this is the awesome cast. Check out everything at awesomecast.com. His email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. That'll put you in touch with producer Missy. And uh, if you're interested in any advertising on the show or with uh, being uh, in our audience uh, as we record here live here on Tuesdays, hit us on Twitter at awesomecast. Uh, Facebook for Awesome Cast and the Facebook group where we have a lot of discussion and stories shared. There are a lot of them in the doc this week. Please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube and ask your uh, talkie device, whether it be a Google Home, a, 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 an Amazon Echo. Uh, when I plug this in, it'll actually work. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Or even your HomePod, ask uh, for the Awesome Cast podcast to play on there and tune in on on uh, podcasts on uh, Google Podcasts or wherever you have connected. And of course, if you want to be 
part of the conversation here. We are here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Some shouts out for, for example, Brian Crawford is shouting out Code and Supply as a co-op space, I believe. Yes, So Code and Supply does have a great co-op space. There you go. And uh, that's over on our Facebook page. We are, of course, streaming at other, a couple other spots. Uh, our Twitter over on Twitch for Sorgatron Media and uh, a few other deals as well. But, of course, the conversation currently is over at the Awesome Cast Facebook page. Katie, don't check my search history dutters. Yeah, it's true. I should put that in your chat. Yeah. Or in your uh, title. That's my official title. Yes. <laughs> and also, if you are catching us later on any of those platforms, Tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC455 to continue the conversation from this episode. Uh, thank you to our streaming partners carrying us. Check your local listings on their sites, RiversEdgePGH.com and the 405Media.com to play us throughout the week. And, of course, thank you to our Patreon supporters, Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the Fan of the Show $1 level, our longest Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor. And you guys can support the show, too, at Patreon dot com slash awesome cast we're starting late so i'm going fast <laughs> not that you guys care on podcast side but um let's get into you know there's some let's, let's get into the non-gaming one first because i have a feeling we're going to talk a lot of gaming this show uh katie mm. what is your awesome thing of the week and i see there's a riddle attached to this as well <laughs> i did I, not I, put the riddle in okay <laughs> what I am i on tiktok okay I'm oh we, we didn't talk to you about your tiktok habit that you're developing your over addiction, here your tiktok addiction <laughs> katie what's going on so you know how we're all storming area 51 because we want to see the aliens <laughs> yes <laughs> obviously they can't stop us all <laughs> yeah we all go at once um so some of the animal shelters there's uh one in texas one in oklahoma that are trying to get people they're like picking up on this and they're getting people to storm the shelters on the way to area 51 jeez oh, <laughs> and these pictures are adorably, incredibly cute. Uh, the one on um, Oklahoma has the dogs in tinfoil hats. Oh, there he is. <laughs> and they're adorable. <laughs> and then the other one in Oklahoma has uh, some of the eight cats with little one-eyed alien headbands. That's mm-hmm. super cute. And so a few of the dogs have the same look, too. But uh, yeah. I, I, they rebranded their, their truck, Animal Alien Services. Yeah, <laughs> they, they went all in. The one in Oklahoma has great. a lizard. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Like this is I really love what they're doing with this. This is so much fun. So storm the shelters this weekend. I believe our local uh, I think is it Animal Friends or one of the ones uh, is waiving adoption fees this weekend too. Oh. So yeah, what is it? I like? believe that's Animal Friends. Yes. I'm not 100% sure on that. Go get all the animals. For me, because I can't have all the animals. And and Chilla, what is with this riddle? I don't know. Here? I saw it and it made me think of Dutters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to read it? So it's the the riddle is I go in stiff and dry. The longer I'm in, the wetter I, the wetter and better I get. I come out dripping and start to sag. What am I? Um. <laughs> Are we allowed to say? <laughs> it's a tea bag. It's a tea bag. Okay. <laughs> okay that's, good, that's really good that is a good that's one, a good this, one. Is, this is what you're doing on tiktok these days um, so it's like one of those things where like i get a random notification so tiktok is the worst that like i don't follow anyone right mm. i joined and i'm like what am i ever going to do with this i don't know but for some weird reason when it said do you want tiktok to be allowed to send notifications <laughs> i clicked yes so oh, i get these random notifications okay. for these tiktoks okay and I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. I watched the first one and I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. Or, oh, that's a really cool idea. Like someone took someone took the panoramic panoramic camera on iOS. And like they had like Sorg, if where you were sitting, there was like a mirror behind you. They started the panoramic and panned past you. But then because the camera stops taking the picture once it gets past a certain point. They turned around and flicked themselves off in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And the mirror now has a different image, like the image of the person flicking themselves off, but they're like looking facing. Oh, okay. wow. Like, there's these like super cool random ideas. Now, there's a lot of like teeny bopper stuff, and you kind of got to scroll past that. Teeny bopper. But stuff. some of the teen type stuff is even interesting from like the aspect of people jumping around their room and their clothes change as they jump around. Like, it's just random, Ooh, neat. like, 30-second like clips that, to me, is way more engaging than, like, Instagram TV or anything I see on Facebook. Well, like, right. the, the creativity factor. Download TikTok. 
the creativity factor that people you haven't put been in into there. this is pretty impressive. I feel like TikTok is basically uh, if Vine hadn't been murdered by Twitter, mm-hmm. then TikTok is is like what Vine would have been. But how long were Vine videos? They weren't 30 seconds. They were, they were, they six, were six seconds, but six they were seconds. starting to play around with longer ones and they were going to eventually get there. Yeah, so TikTok... And I, th- I feel like TikTok originally started off as a lip sync mm-hmm. type thing. But it was now more happening. I've seen some wrestlers do Or that was musically. Stuff. Like, I, I've mostly just TikTok seen, did it too. Yeah, they, they did, did too. I've seen some wrestlers do some things, but mostly they've just taken like, taken, like show footage and like mi- remixed it or made multiples of the footage or something like that and then shared it out. Um, so uh, I am Sorgatron on air now. I'm officially in there. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's going to be like teenage girls, like, you know. But you got to scroll through some of that. I, get, like, get, get, I don't I care get which school that. in Pittsburgh has I just the weird, I don't boys. know. This guy's in a beer fridge, I guess. What? There you, you go. don't? <laughs> I mean. It's I actually see no difference between those two videos. They were shot. Are they the same video? Because they, uh, you had a video of, That's of guy, people guy, like guy. doing makeup, but it was. Both of them were shot from like inside I I about a fridge. The, it was a guy. Well, I don't know. This is just a guy in a fridge. That yeah, but there's talking. also one before he's that. He's talking. He put his phone in the fridge and he's talking to you. Go, he's yelling go, in his fridge. Go to the yeah, one but the, okay, no, yeah, no, that no, one is so also one? in no, 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 a fridge. The, the one of the guy thought, with the ladder and the spray paint. Oh wait, hold on. I thought that one was kind of fun. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's there it is. You seen this one? Yeah. What is his name? That's that's like a Banksy. It's like a Banksy one of painting. All right. All right. But like, watch. No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, watch. You gotta watch the video. He's I, the thought was, I thought that was fine. See, 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 he's spray painting the ladder. Mm-hmm. Now it's all of a sudden climbable. Mm-hmm. There's a ladder painted on the wall above him. He finished his spray paint, and now he climbs all the way up the ladder, and the guy runs through it like it was originally a painting. Oh, so is there like a little editing to this? Or yeah, yeah. I'm get yeah, I'm guessing. Like, like how are they how are they doing it's, this? It's, okay, it's, the, so that's the video clip type stuff that I like okay. catching on here. That, that actually is pretty cool. I'm gonna. What yeah. do I, I like can't it? remember I'm his name, but he's all, he does YouTube complex. magic the same. Well, okay. I am yeah. gonna follow him, and can I share this? And there's like music playing in the background that I probably shouldn't play on this show. Let's see. Okay. All right. Well, while we're doing that, Ch- uh, Chilla, I don't know. Is that your awesome thing of the week? Because you had something else. No, actually, it wasn't. <laughs> and mine will be mine's more on the video game aspect, and I think I've covered it when it got announced. But Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three dropped on Friday for Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. Highly, highly is recommend. Is that only it. on Switch, or yes. is it cross? Really? It's, it's only, not on PC. It's nope. Oh, only mm. on Switch. At least for now, they have the exclusive for now. Um, you can play up to four players simultaneously local or remote um can you be colossus and just hit the ultimate button over and over again and be like colossus will be (laughs) you mean like the arcade game yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) the old arcade game x-men oh yeah i know that colossus will be added i think it either at the end of july or the beginning of next month they if you doubt if you pre-ordered and you I, i don't know if you had to buy the dlc or not but you got deadpool was an add on an early add on this is this is the the because it, it, you know, i told you i, I kind of booted up for the first time the first ultimate alliance because i had i had never played it and it's you can tell it's pre dc cinematic universe i'm sorry pre pre marvel cinematic universe <laughs> with the kind of characters that are in there and and now it's like although you know i probably would not have picked captain marvel when the game came out mm-hmm. right but now i will because i know more about or would you even known or no like miles oh, who is morales that? yeah yeah well there's no there was yeah, well i think spider gwen actually when that game that, that game came out i don't think there was miles well, yeah. morales so the first one yeah the, yeah no 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 so so it's, it is kind of fun like you know this is definitely a post oh we know who the, the guardians of the galaxy would have never been in a game like this 10 years ago yeah, i feel like uh peter quill looks a little odd Maybe he's more. Comic I know no, like, nobody, nobody, no, it, nobody looks like what they do in like. Yeah, they look more like the comic book. I'm looking at the Captain Marvel. It looks like more comic book mm-hmm. Captain Marvel than anything. So, but super cool game, super cool gameplay. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to invest as much time as I can, which is like twenty to thirty minutes every other day. Yeah, pull me but, away from my Doctor Mario. It, but very, <laughs> very easy to pick up, play a little while, hit mm-hmm. hit. The save points are often so it's easy to pick up put down a mm-hmm. um, lot of fun so i'm on the giving the, oh the, go ahead oh, sorry the other the one other thing and someone was texting me about this last night and what i thought about it the only thing i will say is and i like the fact that 
the characters are unlockable, mm -hmm. but you're quickly unlocking characters and you're usually unlocking like two or three characters at a time. Nice. So you're getting a lot of them quickly, but I mm -hmm. feel like I, I either don't want to switch to them because I'm currently trying to level up the characters. That's like been my, my problem. Main, my yeah. main squad. Or um, I have to spend like my extra XP bonuses on them to then be able to switch to them. Um, so other than that, super cool. And I, I feel like this will be one of those that I play through a couple times if I, and I don't know if I get to, but if, do I get to keep the squad, like the people that I unlocked and then go back and play again? Um, I would be totally into that. Love it. Um, I'll let you know if I beat the first one. Because <laughs> that's where I'm at. Um, awesome. Also, gaming thing. I, I, I kind of went to, down a rat hole with gaming historian today while I was uh, I was doing some some video logging, and uh, uh, one of the things that was brought up. Now I am. Um, I, I actually recently acquired. I, I, I love. John was talking about. Oh, you got these old Nintendo powers here, and I was like, no, these are the newer Nintendo powers because I have like the ones from like black and white Game Boy days and with Super Mario 2 on them. Uh, but this is like more, uh, this is GameCube era, I guess, right? From everything I'm seeing? Yeah, there's like Solid Snakes and there was Pokemon Coliseum. Like what was said, uh, 2005, I think Think these were out. Here's a Majora's Mask one. So that's a little bit of an older one unless it was a re-release. No, that would have been the original. Um, so uh, the, my brother was getting rid of some of his magazines. Uh, he, he took all the Pokemon strategy guides though. <laughs> of course you need them all hey you, you gotta catch them all right and then he left me with this and uh, uh most of the box of game informers but so obviously i was a nintendo kid growing up and uh and did not know about uh sega visions magazine now turns out and i love you know hey what's not on there anymore but sega visions is actually archived I think it ran about 100 issues, and it is on archive.org. You can read them. Like, here's some hot tips to play uh, Lion King for the Sega Genesis. That's rather appropriate for this weekend. Uh, let's see what else. We got some uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the OG. Oh, wait. I, actually, this was the Sega CD <laughs> game, I think. And, and we, I'm just saying, LFG has the fifth rated person in the world in the new Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game. So wait, what? <laughs> he's rated online fifth in the world. Uh, one of our regular players that comes in on that game. Now it might be out of six. I don't really know how many people are playing that <laughs> online, but but the new Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fighting game. He's real good at. I didn't it. know there was a new one. Yeah, it plays a lot like Marvel versus Capcom. Oh, uh, or like the Dragon Ball Z okay. fighters. Okay, um, but turns out for whatever reason he's stupidly good at this specific. <laughs> And it's like the now is this the the only fighting game? Like, listen, I can't play Street Fighter. I can't be in a Street Fighter tournament. I'm not going to do Tekken. But if you get me some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fighting, I am in. So that and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, those are his there two well, that he's really good at, and none others. None others. <laughs> uh, he's pretty good at uh, Smash as well. Okay. okay. But like those, those are the three he plays, and the rest of them are just like boring to him. Mm uh john what is your awesome thing i mean it's got to be the stuff coming up uh with replay right yeah so uh next week is replay fx which is a yearly gaming event that uh we do down at the david l lawrence convention center a uh, few hundred pinball machines uh, i think it's got to be closer to a thousand at this point uh same with the arcade machines doing a larger LAN area giant board game area wait larger than last year's larger than oh. last year uh this year we have um we were looking for things we're trying to come up with ideas for things we wanted to do that were not just straight video gaming like i don't know if you've been to the show before but it's uh that many video games all together like arcade games with all of the sound turned up it's like it, it's like a sound pressure on you mm -hmm. so uh we took up a huge amount of the center of the convention center uh, floor space and turned it into a giant lawn with uh, lawn games and chairs oh, and things man. that you can like go relax <laughs> and that's sponsored by kraken so you can also go enjoy some awesome. some rum on kraken while you're there and uh we're doing all kinds of really cool things this year Let's and see. uh we keep trying little, to make it bigger every year. And of course, streaming it. I, I, I gave a hand on the uh, the uh, uh, music stage last year, doing the same this year. Yep. But uh, like, I love this. You guys were doing like like full 
uh, event coverage <laughs> like you would see on like an E3 or something here. With, I don't like yeah, like four streams going. Oh yeah, several stages. There's a little bit from the music stage with uh, that has got to be Bit Brigade over there setting up. And they're playing again this year. Yep, one of my favorites. I saw a Bit Brigade. Where did I see a Bit Brigade shirt? Like out and about <laughs> somewhere in my travels, like in Nebraska or something. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, Bit Brigade. Like, who's going to expect that, like, in the middle of nowhere? So, um, really good, fun stuff. It's a blast. It is the be- it is the biggest geekathon I-, I think I've ever been a part of. Yeah, and we try to make it... Uh, so, E3 is really cool from a new things coming out perspective. And PAX has sort of taken over for the consumer side of what E3 used to be whenever it was more consumer-friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, and... That's all waiting in line, seeing what the next big thing is, playing things that aren't coming out for another month or two. And replay is not that feel at all. Instead of being hyper like consumerism and like buy all the new things, it's a lot more like everything's on free play. We have way more stations than we could ever possibly need because we want people to wander around and have a great time and have it be like they were back in the arcade, except they have more quarters than they have any idea what to do with. <laughs> it's awesome. And of course, if you're not in Pittsburgh, you can follow along. Uh, Replay FX, like you're using the same channels as last year, yep. right? Uh, Replay FX, uh, Twitch, um, and there's several Replay FX uh, music and tournaments, I believe. Yes. yes. So go follow those now so you'll get all the notifications when they go live. And I believe that starts next Thursday, mm-hmm. the, uh, that August would be the 1st. first, August 1st. So go check that out. I don't mean to sound super cool because I am really super cool. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, I'm going to go check out some of the layouts because I'm helping with load-in. Mm-hmm. Are you? Uh-huh. Oh. Early in the week next That's week. Like you're volunteering, I'll, right? Mm-hmm. I'll be there Monday right there with yes. you. Yeah, yay. We'll be there all day together. <laughs> Bring your scooter. Yeah. Yeah. Bring a scooter. I heard. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Super excited about that. Yeah, that, I've done. I've done some volunteer time. Uh, I hung out with the console. Uh, I made made some trouble over in the Doctor Mario tournament the, the first mm-hmm. year they did that. <laughs> so uh, no, it's a blast, and and they are always always looking for volunteers. Always a push for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is going to be the most fun volunteer thing, and and you can you know suggest where to be if you want to just hang out around consoles or the arcades or help with the pinball machines or something like that's all you know you can sign up for that and uh and uh it, it's it's beneficial yeah. <laughs> there's some and nice there was nice perks with the volunteering yeah, yeah and it's amazing uh so i know uh like volunteering i i help with uh programming conferences a lot and mm-hmm. a lot of times that kind of volunteering is you're busy all the time mm-hmm. the show at replay is so huge just being able to find someone with a shirt on mm-hmm. is sometimes like that is like hey i might know where something is mm-hmm. is really hard um if you don't have enough people so we Put, try to make sure there are enough people in every area, even if they don't have anything to do at the time, just to answer questions. So if you're willing to hang out and play some games and talk to people for some hours, uh, replayeffects.org is the website. You can sign up there. You can hit them up on Twitter, all the different places. And uh, I think there's still room for volunteer signups, mm-hmm. but it like right on the edge at this point. Oh, is it? Okay. Definitely try to get in there. <laughs> I am and so sad I am out of town. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Chilla. Um, yeah, and, and we'll be around there as well. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, go check out uh, replayfx.com for more information. Org. Org. Yep. Dot org. Sorry. Org. org. Sorry. <laughs> Off the top of my head. Org. Um, it, it is a nonprofit. It is. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. With the mission of uh, bringing pinball and arcade history mm-hmm. to more people. Yeah, so we had some we had some interviews. We wanted to know more about the background of replay effects uh, in our feeds for awesome cast and awesome chat. Uh, there's a few that we've t- did right over there at a uh, at, uh, uh, pinball Pittsburgh and everything too. So. Is, it, is there anywhere else that they do that same type of thing with a big free play? Uh, big there are, um, there? but I think this is the biggest. Yeah, I think this one is pretty. Plus, it keeps growing every year. It does keep growing. I was just wondering, like, is this like a Comic Con thing where you could like hit a couple of these across the U.S. per year? I think there are other ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, but um, but again, I haven't seen anything at this scale. Like, they're usually like there's a warehouse room somewhere or something. Yeah, not like yeah. I think there are two or three other major ones, Mm -hmm. and I can't think of their names off the top of my head because I wasn't ready for that. There's a but there are a couple. uh, But a lot of times they are tied up with pinball tournaments. Yes. So Mm -hmm. if you look up up the pinball 
sort of like world tour kinds of uh, uh, tournaments mm-hmm. to to like so replay is the largest pinball tournament in the world. That's like the finals of the year, mm-hmm. and uh, also the second largest tournament in the world because if you don't qualify for the final day they just throw another tournament for everyone there called the intergalactic and that is the second largest pinball tournament uh in the world (laughs) each year but uh the qualifiers to get into uh like stern runs Mm -hmm. a pinball league and Mm -hmm. a few other people do and they qualify you for placement into um into Pinburg and into replay. Um, those are often like accompanied with the rest of the arcade stuff. Okay, cool. All right. Excellent. Go check it out. And Hey, go check out our friends, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, our friends at slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway.com. Uh, and of course here in Beachview, Carnegie East end and PNC park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. If you're going down to replay FX, you're just around the corner from a, uh, slice on Broadway right there, uh, across the river at PNC park. So if you want to partake in that, my friends, please do that again. They've been supporting us for a good long time. Great talking. I end up talking wrestling with them when we go in there and we pick up our pizza every week. Uh, we knew them when they were just a just a, just the one pizza shop here in Beachview. And look at their expansion uh, over all these years. Go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com and let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right. We got a lot of great conversations over at the Facebook group. But also I want to check in with our friend Chachi. He, of course, has his video game journey that he has restarted uh, recently. He is rolling through the N64, of course, the 1001 Games uh, book that he's been obsessed with for years. He's restarting that journey, and he's been going at it. He's been hitting up some Excite Bike 64, some uh, F-Zero X over there. So he's getting all the reboots from N64, it seems like. Uh, so uh, a really good run there. Did he finish? I think he he finished all the n64 games i think this, it, this week I think. yeah yeah i don't know if they're all up but uh, at least like he finished the reviews for them yeah so he is moving into what do you say snes or something next i think so um i got some text he was looking today. for a game i would splatter house splatter house one of my favorite ones yes from the uh, turbo, turbo graphics yeah yeah he's been he's been really kind of uh, uh bumping up that setup there uh so he's he's going to town with this he's and you can check it out at thegamejourney.com uh, now officially as well. So go check that out. And also, like I said, from the Awesome Cast group, uh, apparently uh, Doug Durda is uh, our friend from uh, Yin's Love Barbecue. Uh, he says it's time to uh, watch uh, binge watch farming videos, apparently. Um, so apparently this article that he found over on, on LinkedIn, farmers are turning to social media to post a uh, uh, post about their crops. Uh, earning more on YouTube than through actual farming, including the Bloomberg. So, <laughs> so they've turned to it to like to share their tips, and then YouTube just exploded with them, and they're actually making money from it. So, here's your new YouTube star: are, are the farmers? It, it kind of comes full circle here, right? Now we're we're bringing everybody in. Well, I mean, I know whenever we have parties, having the uh, sort of like the calm video that's just like when people have too much they can just sit down and sort of zone out to click spring is one or <laughs> um the the huge collection of people that randomly build stuff with with dirt in uh <laughs> in random jungles <laughs> what just, you know what, what is the, this the, yeah they got the guy that's the, the dug out like four little, different pools with at the, this the point. island in the center yes. and the little hot the little hot oh <laughs> i love that video what? so and they make I, their own you they guys make their own cement. They made yeah, like their yeah. own cement blocks yeah, and lay totally, them in there. Totally. So Check it's not out. just it's one person. It's, it's, it's like a whole industry of YouTube videos mm-hmm. of doing that kind of stuff, like uh, naturalist survival and stuff, where it's just nature sounds and someone building something over a really long time. <laughs> so I totally get that there's like too. the North American version of it is sitting there farming for probably <laughs> a half hour with nothing but wow. like combine noises and like. Wow. That's some. I, this one, I, how do you guys have the time to find just people moving dirt videos? But it's but it's I, one of those <laughs> it's one of those um, time lapse videos, so it's only like a minute or two. Yeah. Oh no, they yeah. they released the whole video. Oh, too. Did, oh yeah. yeah. In yeah. in full length. Not quite full length. They like come back to it, but like digging a pool is like twenty five minutes of like <laughs> somewhere around one thirty in the morning. You're like, all right, just one more pool, and then we're going to bed. <laughs> uh, well, hey. 
entertainment. Um, speaking of people taking entertainment a little too long, this was from the local news, unfortunately, and I believe this was a local general. Uh, yeah, because no, this is in, in Memphis. Fortnite video game sends a Memphis eight-year-old to the emergency room. This is from Steve of Pittsburgh Bolt Sports here on this network. Um, and I think Dirt is probably going to be uh, paying attention to this, too, because I know he was sharing with us his... his his man, I, I could not imagine raising a kid around Fortnite these days. <laughs> uh, we, we, we gotta explain it because that, that headline's a little damning, right? So the family said the eight year old boy um, was playing Fortnite and he didn't stop to use the bathroom. And then there's a further in this article that says doctors are, said that <laughs> said that this is becoming more of a common issue with young children, and so much that the World Health Organization named gaming disorder as a new disease last summer. So make sure your kids are going to the bathroom, guys. I mean, I <laughs> so I have an eight-year-old. Yes. I have a gaming place. He knows about Fortnite. Yes. But let me tell you something about children. They are exceptionally dumb. They can do very <laughs> smart things. However, they can't do things like think about if they have to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. or think about if they're hungry. Like, you have to stop them and have them stop doing everything they're doing and say, hey, are you hungry? Ask your stomach. Check to see. Like, if, I don't think this is a Fortnite thing so much as a just like... A kid thing. Kids or, just... I mean, sit in front of the TV. Yeah, anything, whatever it right? is. I mean, if they're being overstimulized, they're not, they're not doing all yeah. that, right? Although I think I, I could see maybe video games because you're much more active and engaged. Mm -hmm. um, it is easier to forget mm -hmm. things. And that happens to adults, too. Uh, my wife will sit there and click games like Diablo for a really long time before she realizes that she's like three hours past when she should have eaten last. We'll, we'll do like that. Cranky. We'll, we'll do that here. We'll, we'll be working all day and be like, Oh, we forgot to get mm -hmm. lunch. Yeah. I mean, totally. Especially when you're working for yourself. Right. Uh -huh. So that, that happens a lot, but that doesn't happen with TV the same way. In TV, no, you can start not as engaged. It. No, right. no, but I, Netflix binging probably doesn't help. But I, I feel like sometimes <laughs> these parents blame the game and the, kid <laughs> why like, did you a, let as, your kid play the game that a, long as a parent like or the, or the people the like the parents that say i can't get my kid off that whatever mm -hmm. like shut off your internet if it comes like like you you're, you're the parent you're the parent you yeah. have control over this situation you're the parent you play the bill yeah yeah you like i i'm not sure i understand why there, there's something that could be done here and and I don't think it's going to take an an intervention on some on Maury Povich to solve this problem. <laughs> Maury I, I just I just don't get it. Uh, our friend Chris Whitlatch of UniversalWit.com shares with us. Uh, man, RF, RFID wristbands are all the rage. But actually, I included part of these um, when uh, working on a formula video for SAE from this past week, and they actually use uh, RFID wristbands to check in with a phone, like to check in the drivers. Because they're only to make sure they're at the mandatory driver meetings. Mm. It was kind of, it was kind of like you know just expected before. But now they say, okay, you've been to a meeting, and if you show up at the race and we have you as not going to the meeting, you're not getting in the car. Okay. Right. And also, you know, hey, you're only allowed to do so many of the races. They have so many drivers to make sure that you know that happens and everything. Um, so similar technology. So this is one he sh he shared from uh, BBC.com. Um, the uh, Cheshire's Blue Dot uh, Festival um, is going to be using RFID, RFID bands to try to gamify festivals at this point. I said visitors will check in with in, at stages, talks, and stalls, creating a quote mission log. They will be sent to after the event. That would be cool. If I, every session I went to, like like say podcast movement last year, mm -hmm. like I know you could kind of mark them in the app, but if you just said, "Hey, I went here, checked in. Now here's a log of everything I went to, and like notes for it, or the video, or it, you know, so I can kind of follow up on it or something. Or here's the contact information of like the people on the panel, maybe." Um, I was, I was just thinking of replay FX. If you could tap into every game that you played, mm -hmm. it would keep people moving potentially instead of being stuck at a single game for an hour or two or three, encourage them to move encourage on, encourage them games. to move on and experience Try more stuff. More stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be interesting too, if you could get it to where you kind of check in and check out to make sure you didn't just walk down the row and go tap, 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 tap. Yeah, true. Um, or maybe you could only check in every so often. That's, that's how. But still, there's there's that's some... how Chuck E. Cheese does it with the unlimited game pass. 
<laughs> you can't. So you don't cheat and have yeah. two children using the same car. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah but yeah. Uh, no, it's a super cool idea. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen um, one of the things I've seen the RFID tags or the wristbands used for as well is whenever you're at concerts or um, at they, they're starting to do it at uh, esports. Uh, mm-hmm. things too, where everyone's uh, wristbands will light up different colors for specific things happening. Um, like when so- a certain team is coming out or like you could even do this with something like wrestling. When a certain person comes out, everyone's wristband turns a certain color, like oh, really brightly. So they did that at like Marvel live. Yeah. 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 And it's a, it's a really cool effect. Help save Iron Man. And yep. then everybody's thing lights up. Yeah. <sighs> But yeah, and everyone has back. to lift their hand up over their head, and it mm-hmm. makes the whole thing look amazing. This thing costs you like twenty bucks, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Same people are doing Jurassic Park World live, and I'm kind of interested in going on. Uh, anyways, uh, the producer Missy, while she is uh, out on assignment this week, uh, she did put in her uh, awesome thing of the week, and apparently, uh, the Washington Monument was a uh, uh, me. Uh, made into a, a, uh, a rocket projection to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon launch. And you see it projected on the length of the uh, uh, Washington Monument, and you see the Saturn rocket taking off, the Saturn, Saturn V uh, rocket that they used for the Apollo 11 mission. That looks really cool. I, I love all this stuff. Also, side note, there, there's also... Um, did, did I get the right thing? Oh, no. You guys didn't see that. It wasn't cooked, hooked up right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that again on the screen. That'll work. Apparently, one of our things is connected over here. Um, but also, while I'm setting that up for you guys to actually see on the visuals, uh, apparently, I was the only one watching it. Um, I was I was excited and set my mom the trailer for Snoopy in space today. <laughs> so, which is apparently, so I didn't know Apple got the rights to the peanuts. Of course they did. What? <laughs> And there's going to be an educational series called uh, Snoopy in Space that's going to be on uh, Apple TV Plus uh, whenever that comes out uh, this fall. So, uh, you know, kind of an educational children's thing. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to Red Baron in Space. Um, I'm just looking at that rocket launch, and I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> how many lumen those projectors oh, were geez. to throw that on there that yeah. brightly. Yeah, and that high. Jeez. Yeah. Um, Riz, Katie, you you talked with Riz about this game. Sometimes I talk. It's to an Riz. open world game where you solve mysteries as a gang of cats. Apparently, this was the game made exclusively for you. Yep, this is my dream come true. They mm-hmm. picked my brain from <laughs> from everything I'm looking at. Yes, so, so I need to play with Riz ASAP. It is um, it it, it was a um a, a Kickstarter account that got this game going. Um, oh, I didn't catch the name. I'm playing an ad. That's not. Those aren't cats. Those are human beings with cell phones. That is unacceptable. Island. There's a Kickstarter video, and there is, they're just cats in the world. <laughs> and it's VR. Like that's it's even, VR yeah, too. There's a VR element. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, this is going to become a movie. <laughs> 100%. It's called uh, Peace Island, a mix of science fiction, alternative history, and mystery. Unfolds from the perspective of nine cats who call the island home. When they wake up and find their human companions are gone. Oh, uh, that's fun. Yeah, I like the side quest. You can do side quests. And I always see the the meme of the cat that looks like he's got a side quest because he's got the light on him a specific way. I'm like wondering what animal has like what kind of light on him as, <laughs> to direct me to the side quest here. That's awesome. I oh, wonder yeah. I wonder if like you said this like was picked from your brain, was like from your nightmares where the cat's trailer came from, the oh, new <laughs> oh, I haven't watched that yet. <laughs> that yeah. is That's a another nightmare. awesome thing of the week is that oh. that trailer is great. Awesomely terrifying. Super <laughs> <laughs> nightmare. Oh. Uh I want to give a shout out to another neighborhood friend. I actually saw Joyce when I was picking up our slices because it's just a couple doors down. Uh our friends at Sparkle Dragon Magical Emporium here in Beachview. Whether you're looking for a custom hand crafted gift or something to soothe your soul uh sparkle dragons magical emporium has you covered be sure you stop uh by their website at sparkledragon.com or if you're in the area stop by and have a nice cup of tea and a chat with joyce down there um celebrating five years here in beachview as business so all right real quick here we got a couple other stories uh first of all toys r us is coming back you guys kind of sort of (laughs) <laughs> so uh, by returning we mean that we mean there's going to be two stores 
Uh, <laughs> our, uh, Nate in the uh, uh, group says, uh, Returns of New Store is sort of letting toy manufacturers go direct to the kids. It's like a trade show, but where the end users interact with the company. So there's that aspect of it. So they're going to be... Um, they're going to return with Steam workshops and smaller stores, basically. Did, um, did a retailer just call them end users? No, this this was somebody in our in our group. Oh, okay. That said that. <laughs> no, 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 no. The retailer did not say end users, but because I, I wouldn't the, be surprised if that's where retailers are like starting to think of human beings as yeah, end users now. True. Yeah, and apparently, is this the company? I believe this is the company that also helped uh, Macy's not too long ago um, with their mm-hmm. kind of re refitting i mean all, all these companies are kind of trying to get rebranded rebooted for uh uh you know fighting the walmarts and the and the amazons these days in our dying malls right um but uh let's see you know toys R Us stores used to be thirty thousand square feet and we're talking more about uh 6500 they're going to be the first stores are going to pop on up in houston and paramus new jersey the only reason i know paramus new jersey is from a joke in ghostbusters 2 uh so <laughs> i don't know what that says uh uber is testing a 25 dollars pass that covers eats and transportation are you interested so, are you getting some some free eats out of this what's the so and maybe i, I mean i i use uber mm-hmm. i understand what's the pass get me uh let's get into the details here so lyft was doing something similar where if you paid like 25 dollars a month you got like 10 percent off of, like it was weird you paid to get a percentage off so many rides of the month right like it, it it's i guess if you're using it enough um so the subscription is being trialed in uh, uh variations of the plan in chicago and san francisco according to engadget all of them include trips on jump e-bikes and scooters at no extra cost free uber's eats delivery so i'm presuming that's going to be the fee from uber for the delivery not the food itself, and a fixed discount on Uber rides uh, for $25 a month. So if you use a lot of Uber and a lot of the Uber services and like to use our scooters, there you go. Bring a helmet. Do they include seems, helmets? Seems like the like the the cost of Uber Eats, like that delivery cost that Uber charges you is high. Mm-hmm. It feels I like I cannot it. imagine. It's like, like something that, like this has to be to something that they need to look different accounting wise. Yeah. Because this cannot possibly be a good idea, like money wise, for them to make more money. Mm-hmm. That's always the biggest thing when I, I, you know, did a little bit of Uber Eats and Postmates. And it was just like, you know, it takes almost an hour between getting the order, waiting for it, delivering it sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then you got like six bucks as the driver. Yeah. And sometimes um, you got, and then sometimes you paid. You know, then on the other side, it's like, hey, you're paying six bucks. Plus, you're paying for the order person that calls the restaurant to take care of it. Sometimes, um, you know, depending on what the setup is. Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know. It, it well, it's like how they always say the um, the rides themselves are so subsidized that like there's no way to make money off the way they run now, right? And now that they're right. IPO, they're going to be start looking at that. So, so again, I think that's what's what's making things like this happen to make those work, right? So now if you're in an area where the e-bikes and scooters are, does that mean you get unlimited e-bikes and scooter rides or is it just a percentage off that I, too? No, no, no. Those are free. Okay. You can get all the scooter. You can scoot. All the scooters. When I was in you Nashville. Can... Oh, dude. Nash. They cracked down on those scooters in Nashville. They're all over the place uh, in the last like month. Okay. In the last month. Because I was there a little over a month ago and yeah. they were just littered all I, over yeah the i was there in it may was you, ridiculous. Were tripping, you were tripping over them i, was, was I think crazy. i was there the week before you were yeah that's right like that's that, right yeah, yeah no, I, no i was there in june because I, it, it was it's like a scooter wasteland it is <laughs> it's because you don't have to like it, you know here when you when you get a bike uh at the city bikes like you have to park it in the city bike rack right mm-hmm. it, but it's just like oh i'm done and we're like my miles it's gps and the next person can find one that's how it was in St. Louis. Yeah, when we were there, out there. It was just like, here you go. There's like, littered everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They just don't, like this, walking over. This them. is a huge problem. Then they pay people to go and collect the collect the scooters, then throw them in the back of a truck to to get them collected and set up, you know, and clean them up every once in a while. So, Dutters, well, you got I, some, you got some bad news. I got bad news. This, this is the awesome my, cast. What are you doing with the bad news? My unawesome thing of the week. Uh, Google and Facebook are tracking your porn use. <sighs> I know. Even in private bro- bro- even, even in even, cognito mode. Even in cognito safe. mode? Mm-hmm. Then why am I cognitoing? Yeah. Even on my burner device? <laughs> <laughs> they know it's you. They know. 
<laughs> Jill, stop using that, that company uh, computer. <laughs> so, it would, so, so it would have, yeah so they're, they're figuring this out there was a paper that was published and the interesting thing about the paper it was um, an analysis by Microsoft uh, somebody at Carnegie Mellon University and University of Pennsylvania uh, did this particular survey we looked at 22,000 of the internet's most frequently porn websites and found that 93% of them were sending data to third parties who were mm. tracking users web browsing <laughs> well sure oh there you go yeah so go. yeah and like Facebook and Google are like we're not paying attention to this stuff but you're like yeah okay <laughs> so this is so you may start seeing targeted ads based upon <laughs> what you're watching on the internet in like the rest of Google and so <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're worried about like that's what this yeah, paper wait. particularly addressed yeah wait mm -hmm. I did get and I wondered what, what it came from because <laughs> I got I got in my Gmail today an are you single ad Mm -hmm. And I was like, what makes you, where did this come from? What coming into my email, other than the fact that I could just get email about podcasting technology and comic books, uh, that I, <laughs> maybe that's all right. What were you doing? Missing yeah. out of town. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just like, what the heck is this? Um, but well, there you go. Yeah. The paper is pretty easy to read. They have a link to the paper and the one link that I put up in the thing. And it's really interesting. To Don't bother reading in your private browser. Yeah. I read it everywhere. Um, one of the issues is like they wait based on a random sample, they found that forty almost forty five percent of the URLs expose or strongly suggest the targets are like a specific gender or sexual identity, which is an issue. And then when you get to some of these different countries, you it may be identifying your particular interests and sending this information to in a lot of countries. I, well, the U.S. isn't super about things, but mm -hmm. it's it's illegal and it's dangerous to mm -hmm. be identified by your sexual sexual orientation or and so that this is a huge concern for those kind of oh my gosh i'm sorry they they had a couple mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a couple of links some of the sites coded reliably across coders such interests to include um bestialitylovers.com boyfmomtube.com <laughs> Like they're just mentioning some of the sites. <laughs> sorry, Go they, they picked the more colorful ones. For oh, example, yeah. sorry, it was. <laughs> I, I didn't did, read that section. I wasn't sure if you were going to hear, so I actually didn't put this in the notes. But did you see the podcast that I shared? Oh, I did not. Uh, in the group, so this was actually out of the Inside Podcasting newsletter, and it was kind of like I haven't heard of like like this this as a podcast before. But again, we're kind of thinking, and I'm starting I'm, I'm starting to work on this idea of. Like there's podcasting and then there's these like highly produced podcasting and they feel like such a separate thing mm -hmm. that I feel like we need to start separating categories a little bit because um, of you know I feel like the more that I say oh yeah I'm a podcaster people think I'm doing like crime dramas uh, you know or something <laughs> or investigative reporting but uh, that's another thing but um, this was one called Dipsy and uh, this is a let me get it pulled up here for you guys if that's okay it's visually it's okay it's just just some Nice images. Uh, we believe in tapping into your inner sexual powers is just that powerful. So basically, it's a storytelling production company, female-founded tech company and story studio, but it is um, uh, about sexual identity and and you know telling stories and and this is a this is one of those paid. This is also I, I don't know if it's still podcasting if there's a, if it's behind a paywall, right? Uh, but uh, it, it was kind of a curious, different um, project that I saw pop up there in the podcasting world. So a little bit of everything going on. Um, let's see. Uh, anything else, Chilla? Anything else you want to touch on here? Um, Probably bad phrasing after those last couple of stories. So one of the yeah. <laughs> so one of one of the things that I thought's cool and came out in the latest release of iOS for iPhone and for oh, iPad. Yeah. You, so by the way, for, you made the deep dive into the, into beta. Yeah, so I made the deep dive into beta, mm -hmm. but this came out in 12.4, which released, I think, yesterday. Okay. To the public. Oh, okay. So if you're familiar with what Samsung does when you get a new Samsung phone, they actually, se they actually send you this little dongle that you clip onto the USB side of the the mini or of your USB cable and it turns it into a double-sided like USB-C cable and you can plug your new phone into your old phone and it will sync all of the content and data across. Mm -hmm. um, 
iOS, you've always either had to back up the cloud or back up locally, whether it be wired or wireless in your house, mm -hmm. um, and then restore from iTunes. Um, they are now going to allow you to do a direct transfer from iPhone to iPhone, mm -hmm. whether it be over local Wi-Fi or via if you have the camera connector kit that lets you kind of oh. turn the lightning port into a USB port. Yeah. Um, and then you plug the, the lightning USB cord in there and you tether the two phones together. Um, and it'll allow you to, to kind of quickly transfer. They, they started to go down this path with like, I think the, the, um, the watch where you kind of scan the picture on the watch. And mm -hmm. I think they also do, kind of a bare bone setup, but not non data transfer with, with iPhone. Um, so I thought this was pretty darn cool it's, and it makes it much easier than tearing through gigabytes on your, on your hard drive to store a backup. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or waiting for everything to come down. I did notice as we were looking at the screens here on nine to five Mac, um, it gives you kind of the time estimates. Now, if you're doing download from iCloud, you know, it downloads just enough for you to get started and then the rest of the apps kind of come down later over time. Uh, and that takes, they, they said you can get going in about 15 minutes, but it looks like it's about an hour and a half. And I'm presuming this is based on how much room is on your, how much is on the how other much phone space, coming over. Yeah, how many photos so, you have, how many apps you but, have. So it, it's stuff. like a full drop, not a, I'm, I can start start fiddling with my phone and, and setting up my Facebook and stuff while everything else and, is coming but, down. But I'm guessing this transfer is also encrypted. So quick tip, mm. if you are using iCloud Backup, Mm -hmm. or even a local backup on your PC, I highly, highly, highly recommend you encrypt that backup. There's a there's a checkbox in iTunes. There's a selection on the device to encrypt that backup. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you to encrypt it because of what happened to the celebrities where they got their cloud backups hacked and all of their pictures came out to the public. I'm telling you to encrypt it because when you encrypt it, iOS then stores all of your app passwords and account passwords mm -hmm. in the backup. So when you do a restore, you don't have to remember 52 different passwords. And yes, you can have LastPass or something like that. But if you don't want to pay for that type of service, it will put all of the passwords in there. So then you don't have to type them all back in. It makes a world of difference if you're actually trying to use different passwords across every social media, email, message, any kind of app that requires a, a login. If you're using different passwords on those systems, it makes it a lot easier. Awesome. Hey, I want one last story I want to get to on the gaming side, rather appropriate for our guests this week. Uh, Fortnite mm. had a pretty big event this week. Did uh, I haven't played for a while, so I didn't know. I'm not. I'm not up on what's going on over there. It's that big download every time I try to load it on my <laughs> iPhone. To be honest, that keeps me yeah. out of it. Yeah, it's like, hey, we need to drop like two gigs on your phone. It's like, <sighs> okay. to be fair, it does that every other week. So. It does. It was getting old, right? Because it was. Yeah, I don't. Play can't it they come enough. up with a better way to do like a differential? And yeah, they something. can't be loading all that new content all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a significant amount, but it can't possibly be that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Fortnite's giant monster and robot finally fought. Yes. <laughs> so I guess the, the robot had appeared at the top of a volcano, and I don't know where the monster came from. Uh, the, 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 the monsters, uh, the, <laughs> they were uh, called, uh, one was Doggus and Caddis battled. One is a kind of uh, Voltron looking, and I love that this entire video. There's there's a YouTube on the link that we we have in the notes of the uh, the battle itself, and it's as somebody is coming in on their, you know, from the launch glider, watching this 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 go down, and that's the part where they disappeared in the water. Oh, you're stuck up there. That's okay. Uh, well, fro that's just Chromecast. That's just Chromecast getting weird. Okay, cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so we, there was just a giant monster battle, and I'd love to see what people were doing around these guys, like trying to like hit them with their pickaxe or something uh, during the course of this. But it it, it, it definitely, um, I'm sure if you go in, you can you can see the aftermath. There's a lot of stuff they knocked down and blew up, and I'm sure there's like giant footprints that you can uh, uh, hide in now. And there's a, uh, uh, well, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen the full video, but there are some remnants of the loser in this battle uh, uh, left behind, it looks like. So go check that out. Uh, this, that's, that's awesome. I guess when everything from the mystery meter to Thanos to 
Yeah, they uh, they do a really good job. So with these kinds of games, you need to keep the map interesting. Mm -hmm. And so you have to change it every so often because like that's their way of keeping it interesting is continuously change the map. Um, but instead of their story being developers did a new change and moved crates around in this area, they turned it into an actual story. And uh, kids go crazy over wanting to see the story. Mm -hmm. And oh, like, it's a huge party at LFG when people get in and like from uh, whichever one it was with the rocket launch that started uh, breaking through the dome mm -hmm. and like clipping around ever since then, like it's, you get to see it once and you have to be logged in to see it. And mm -hmm. so for a whole bunch of these kids, it's like an event. And these are kids that never grew up with right. like, Right. Hey, Saturday morning cartoons are on at this, this is exact time and this yeah. is it, right? Like everything mm -hmm. that they've experienced has been on demand whenever you want to watch it. And now this is a thing replicating the you either and catch all, it or you miss it. And they're all sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. This, so so we actually got an anecdote just from that, from Matt Carlins. He says uh, his son Mason remembered it was happening about 15 minutes before it started. And he would have thought a nuclear reactor was about to melt down. <laughs> but he did make it in time to see it. And it was very cool. Fortnite is fun. So again, it, it is. I, I feel like every time, like our friends that, that have kids, it's like, how are you contending with Fortnite, <laughs> you yeah. know, and dealing with that and the awesome things like this? So it's not like all like, okay, Junior forgot to pee him to pee, and now we have to go to the hospital kind of stuff. Uh, thankfully, but you yeah, know. I think it's cool that like just like adults have, you know, event series and things like that, like you know Chernobyl or. Uh, game of thrones right that everyone gets to watch and then talk about the next day now like they're the equivalent for kids again when now that like cartoons are no longer at a specific time because that used to be the thing back in the day you mm -hmm. talk about uh oh did you see the new x-men or mm -hmm. whatever it was that was coming on that week or the new turtles because it was like new every other week and that became monday night wrestling and, and right. whatever the case may be right right and so that, that is mostly gone from our reality when it used to be like a standard thing for everyone. And uh, it's neat to see how kids react to it again. Awesome. Go check that out. And hey, uh, just shout out, hey, we do a lot of the streaming stuff, you know, like this show uh, here from uh, Sorgatron Media Studios, but that is a part of over at Sidekick Media Services uh, from sporting events to music video production to conferences and everywhere in between our team here at Sidekick Media Services, including Pruders from Missy and Dutters over here. Uh, it has you covered as you as a sidekick in your superhero project. What next big thing can we help you with? Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Uh, and uh, we do having a lot of fun uh, doing a lot of projects between you know pro wrestling podcasts and uh, sometimes we bring Optimus along for the ride as well. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, was it even in the shot over there? Oh, Optimus is off shot over there. Our our new friend Optimus Prime. That has, no. been, that has been podcasting, that has been going on tr the wrestling trips with me lately. Uh, so he's taking Missy's place. He's taking Missy. Producer Optimus is now uh, in charge. Uh, so Producer Prime, if you will. So, John, thank you so much for coming back on the show. I know hey, we're, we're catching you in the breather in between <laughs> two big events here, <laughs> between Academy Pittsburgh. Uh, where can they find out more about that and, uh, and looking for group? Sure. Uh, Academy Pittsburgh is at academypittsburgh.com. It's a 12 week high intensity, uh, 40 hour a week uh, boot camp for developers. Uh, the ninth session uh, applications are currently open. So, if it's something that you're interested in, if you're looking to learn how to be a developer and maybe uh, use those skills to find a job, uh, go to academypittsburgh.com, sign up, and uh, we'll let you know within a few weeks if you get in or not. And then, uh, looking for group, it's uh, lfgpgh.com. And uh, if you like to play games or if you have kids that like to play games or you're an adult that used to like to play games and want to hang out with adults <laughs> that play games, all of those are options. Uh, we're over in Brookline on Brookline Boulevard. Just show up. You can sit down and for five bucks an hour, play games and have a good time. You don't have to worry about getting the right stuff and make sure it's uploaded like Fortnite. Uh, right. <laughs> and all that stuff. They got you covered over there. It's a lot of fun stuff going on there. And right here in right here in Pittsburgh. And of course, Replay FX, you guys, you won't miss the Looking for Group stage. Nope. Trust me. You're promising it's going to be bigger and badder than it was last year. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> how, big, how many Kabuki screens do we have this year? Oh, Ooh, I don't know about Kabuki screens. There was screens. a lot of them. 
I know, I know we're going to have 60 PCs for the LAN area. Jeez. Plus <laughs> custom-made Unreal Tournament stats uh, reports from uh, students from Academy. What is Unreal Tournament making a comeback? Uh, is that what's happening? Or did it just never go away? I don't think it ever fully went away because it was like... Because if we're talking, I'm like I might I might have to jump in on some of that Unreal Tournament action because yeah. uh, that was that was my my thing for a while. Well, uh, we have I'm some not really cool was... vi- data visualizations, and the game is still super fun. We had to play a whole bunch. Uh, there was a final project for Academy. We mm-hmm. had to play a whole bunch to get logs so they could parse them and throw them up and put them into D3 to make reports and all this stuff. And uh, turns out the game's still a whole lot of fun. We're we playing. Uh, what was the last one? Three. Was the three last was the one? last one? Okay. Uh, there's the uh, in development one that they gave up when Fortnite got too big and they oh, ran really? out of developers. Um, so they gave up on that one. Basically, that was the one that was being made open source. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, the so I played some 2003, 2004. Some people prefer that yeah, over the yeah, 99, but yeah. 99 was really the one I liked the most. So that's the one I'm bringing to replay. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It's going to be on every single LAN computer. Oh, geez. And like the the <laughs> with, screens with, will be up real big where you can see like last match stats and everything. I love that. That is a game we ran in probably the quarter of the horsepower that we all have here today. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, let's go check that out. A lot of fun. You'll see me around replay. You'll see Dutters around replay. You won't see Chilla this year. Aww. You might see my kid running around. There you go. My go look for Chilla's kid. Taking him. Go, go look for Chilla Jr. <laughs> 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 little chill little chill little chill chill like dot net. <laughs> john's chill on the facebooks chill on the twitters katie Maybe becoming little chill oh, little katie chill. dudas is all over the facebook um, um having no pants saturday at the wrestling show yeah. uh <laughs> No pants everywhere. Yes. Pants <laughs> overrated. You should follow, probably follow her Instagram. For I'm that reasonably one. amusing. Yes. Uh, anything else going on with you? I don't think so right now. No? No. Just, oh, there'll be more soon. There'll be more soon. <laughs> we'll see what happens in Erie this weekend. Oh, yeah. I'll be in Erie this <laughs> You'll weekend. You'll be in Erie this Revenge weekend. Pro Wrestling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> to watch that. Yep. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, I'm taking my friends the Sorgs, and they will be going out and having fun because I will make them have fun. Uh, that's a rarity, so mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes, too. <laughs> we don't really do the bar thing. I'm going <laughs> to that, that much. And I'll be around pro wrestlers, too, so that'll be fun, too. Um, we I need to plug real quick um, because they were really excited when I mentioned this on the other podcast. Pittsburgh Current. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, first, I want to give a shout out while I'm loading that up so I get my details right. But uh, uh, Comic Book Pit will be at Wizard World this weekend, speaking of conferences downtown, uh, doing uh, their live recording panel at 11.30 a.m. I don't have room information or anything for that. Check the program for that. I I will be there recording, uh, helping them record their podcast for that. And also, Pittsburgh Current, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And I am unclear if he's going to be in studio or if we're we're, uh, doing this remote yet. I haven't gotten the word on that. But... um, the star of uh wait wait i don't know they flipped out when i said the name thomas ian nicholas will be joining us on there uh he is of course from uh, american pie and he was the lead in the rookie of the year if you remember that movie um the kid that could throw baseball and and save the chicago cubs uh that spoiler alert for a 30 year old movie uh but uh apparently he's going to be joining us on the pittsburgh current podcast so please go check that out uh that'll be on the pittsburgh current uh facebook youtube and periscope slash twitter uh thursday morning at 10 a.m eastern time and of course i hope you guys enjoy wizard chiller are you going to be at wizard world i will not be at wizard world <laughs> i'm like back Ed! to back so here's the funny part so I won't have to miss an awesome cast at all this summer of a vacation. But you're missing all the conferences. But I'm missing everything that's cool on the weekends. But you know what? I'm doing, I, I, like, I appreciate your sacrifices. You're welcome. <laughs> it's just for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. A lot of you jumping in all night. Like Dave Podner and my mom. I love it. <laughs> She, I think she jumped in right before we were talk, talking about private browsing and sex sites. So that's fun. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, our audience. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.